Where are you going, Holmes? Have you been invited somewhere? We have been invited, Watson. We have? Where to? To the Baker Street Irregulars' annual dinner. They sent us an invitation. It is on the table. A dinner? How could those street urchins afford anything like that? I can't understand your interest in them, Holmes. They're dirty. They wouldn't hesitate to steal your wallet. They... Watson, you should be excited. It is a secret dinner. Its location changes every year. Read the menu. Sounds mouth-watering. All right. We, the secret police of Baker Street, invite you, Sherlock Holmes, and Dr. Watson to our annual dinner. Menu, entree, frozen rat head salad. Is, is this a joke? Not at all. Pray continue. Main course, sow's udder in Danny Nutcracker's way. Ah, oh, sounds disgusting, Holmes. Hedgehog goulash. Street turnips in homemade juice. And it goes on. Ah, I can hear them on the stairs now. Oh, well, we can't go there. We can't eat that. Watson, you'll hurt the feelings of those poor children. We have to go. Oh, Mr. Holmes. It is fine, Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Holmes. Wiggins, Dr. Watson is getting ready. He will be delighted to join us. You don't look well, my young man. Is there something wrong? Don't tell me the dinner is cancelled. Mr. Holmes, it's my brother, Leighton. He's in a prison cell. They say he's killed two men. You have to help us, Mr. Holmes, because I know he didn't do it. Where is he now? From what I've heard, they took him to the yard, and they gave him a good beating already. You know what they're like. They'll hang him. They won't look any further. Holmes, we have to help him. Well, and forget about the dinner. Wiggins, I'll take the case. You're fantastic, Mr. Holmes. I'll be waiting for you at the crime scene. You'll be there, right? It's on Half Moon Street in Whitechapel. Very well. Uh, please, gentlemen, leave the scene now. Oh, Mr. Holmes, is that you? Uh, good evening, uh, Constable... Constable Marrow. I was here with Inspector Aberline during the Ripper case, Mr. Holmes, back in 88. But then this is nothing like that case. With this one, we've got the murderer, the weapon and the statements which speak for themselves. Of course, Mara. But you know that appearances can sometimes be deceiving. Who were the victims? The two men here, both shot. The stad fellow was Brian Vercotti, a well-known ruffian. The other, Kenneth Butler, a jeweller by trade. Uh, you spoke of statements. You have witnesses? Well, I was there, so I gave my own statement. And then there were two other witnesses who said they saw the killer Chapman. Mr. Turner, a gentleman who lives in that flat over there. And Polly Powell, a flower seller who was over at the far side of the street. So, Constable Marrow, I should be delighted to hear your testimony. I was standing at the north side of Half Moon Street. That was the side that you came from. But you would have been unable to observe this part of the street, where we are standing now. That is correct. But I saw the two victims slowly enter Half Moon Street, and then shortly after the fireworks started. A few minutes after that, the fellow Chapman rushed towards me and ran into Half Moon Street. Mm, please continue. I didn't pay attention, but suddenly I heard a woman's cries and police whistles on the other side of Half Moon Street. I rushed over there and I saw the two dead bodies on the ground. When I reached Whitechapel Street, I saw Leighton Chapman. He'd been caught by two police constables. Did you hear the shots? I didn't hear any shots. The fireworks were all over the sky. They were so loud I couldn't hear anything else. Now, what were the fireworks in honour of, uh, Constable? Well, uh, today's Queen Victoria's birthday, Mr. Holmes. Ah, uh, yes, I appear to have lost track of the days. It is May now, of course. 
Uh, Constable Marrow, what else caught your attention while you were running through Half Moon Street? I saw nothing but rats, and I took the time to light every corner with my lamp. Did you happen to look up at Mr. Turner's window when you were on Half Moon Street at that time? Yes, I saw that the window was open, but no one was there. It was dark in the room. Constable, your statements have been of great value to me. Good evening, Mr. Turner. Oh, I, I heard Constable Barrow reply to you as Mr. Holmes. Are you that detective, gentlemen? I've heard of you. Uh, and well, I know things. Things about this evening. Excellent. Might we hear your story? Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Uh, I was already in bed when the fireworks started. A few moments after, I clearly heard two gunshots from outside. Please continue. I, I quickly got up and I grabbed a lamp from my nightstand and I rushed towards the window. I looked down and I saw two bodies. And there was a man with a gun who was standing nearby. Where exactly? Oh, near this body. Did he notice you? I don't think so. He rushed towards Whitechapel Street without looking around. Mr. Turner, did you see anyone else in the street? No, I saw no one but that man. The murderer. The fellow they caught. Were the two shots you heard consecutive? Yes, there was a very short pause between them, and, and, and they sounded different somehow. It seemed to me that the second shot was louder than the first. That is an interesting comment. Mr. Turner, what were your actions after you stepped up to the window? I was afraid that the man with a gun might return, so I stayed close to the window till I saw the policeman coming in the half moon from Whitechapel. Then I walked out to tell them everything I saw. You have helped us a great deal, Mr. T Mr. Holmes, did you see my brother at Scotland Yard? Is he all right? Mrs. Powell? What do you want? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I am assisting the police with their investigation of the crime that took place this evening. Well, I've already gave my testimony. But very well. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Yes, yes. I was selling my flowers as usual. And then the fireworks began in honour of Queen Victoria. I enjoyed those. But then, all of a sudden, a young lad ran out of Half Moon Street and stopped just by me. He had a gun in his hand. He was like a ghost and all covered in blood. It was dark, but I could see him because of the flashes from the fireworks. And then? I screamed as loud as I could. I knew that a policeman should be on duty in the vicinity. He had no time to escape. Two constables got him. Then another constable came out from the very same street and I heard him talking of a horrible murder. Mrs. Powell, 
Did you hear the gunshots? I'm not sure. You know, what with the fireworks? Did you see anyone else leaving Half Moon Street prior to or at the time of the crime? No, sir. I did not. Even with all the fireworks, I was very attentive, as I'm always on the lookout for customers. My thanks to you, Mrs. Powell. piece of wood that has stuck between the cobblestones. Let us take a closer look. Hmm. This shard of wood is quite new. The bullet struck his head. This man didn't stand a chance. This is an ordinary key. I wonder what kind of door it opens. He tried to stop the bleeding with his hand. Death was not instant. The bullet penetrated his stomach, a dreadful wound. A tattoo from Westgate Prison. Vercotti must have done some time there. Brian Vercotti suffered greatly. What a terrible way to die. It would be my pleasure to assist you with your investigation, Mr. Holmes. A fairly long pole with a forked end. Mr. Turner, you have stated that you remained close by your window after the crime, is that correct? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. I stayed at my window until the policeman arrived to examine the dead bodies. That is very interesting, Mr. Turner. Constable Marrow stated that he did not see anyone at the window when he was running through Half Moon Street. Oh, oh well, I think Constable Marrow and me, we might have been distracted by the whistles and shouts coming from Whitechapel. We could have missed each other somehow. Do you understand what I mean? It was a bit of a stressful moment to tell you the truth, sir. Allow me to form my own theories, Mr. Turner. Would you mind showing me the view that you had from your window? Uh, not, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Please, follow me.